Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video, we're going to start talking about the IBM Cloud Container Registry. So you might be asking yourself what the IBM Cloud Container Registry actually is. Well, in a nutshell, it's a place to store and uh, share your Docker-based containers within the IBM Cloud. Uh, and it's a place that makes it really easy to then deploy your containers onto your IBM Kubernetes service deployment. So the container registry itself is hosted and managed by IBM. So you don't need to build your own, you don't need to manage it and back it up, it's all done for you. IBM also make it highly available. Um, so it's actually based on infrastructure which is uh, spread across multiple regions around the globe. So if you wanted to, you could actually store your containers uh, across the world in different regions. But within each region, IBM ensures that the infrastructure underneath is highly available so you don't actually lose the containers or access to the service. The service is also scalable, so when you place your containers within the service, you don't need to worry about allocating disk space to it. Uh, the service basically grows to, to meet your needs. And of course, anything that you do store in there is also automatically encrypted as well. So the service itself is multi-tenant, uh, so uh, other users will be using the, uh, the, the registry, uh, but it does give you a private image registry. So basically what you can do is create your own private namespaces uh, into which you then uh, deploy your containers or save your containers. Uh, and of course, nobody else will be able to access that namespace uh, unless you explicitly grant them access. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, it's then really easy to deploy your images from the registry uh, onto your IBM Cloud Kubernetes service. Now, one of the added benefits of using uh, the container registry service is it has this built-in vulnerability advisor. So the vulnerability advisor actually looks at your image when you've uploaded it, it will scan it and then produce a report if it finds any causes for concerns or vulnerabilities. So it's up to you to act on the report. Uh, the vulnerability advisor doesn't fix anything for you, but it's a really great uh, way of making sure that your containers don't contain any vulnerabilities. Now, in terms of costs, uh, there's actually a light and a standard plan. So as always, the light plan is free of charge and it provides, uh, in this case, half a gigabyte of storage and allows you to uh, allows pull traffic. So that's uh, being able to actually pull the image out of the uh, repository of up to five gigabytes per month. And obviously that all resets at the, at the start of the next billing period. The standard plan uh, then allows you to uh, go beyond that. So it provides the free tier as well. So even with the standard plan, you still get half a gigabyte of storage and pull traffic up to five gigabytes per month free of charge. Uh, but if you want to go over and above that, uh, you can do so, but that's when you see it starts to incur costs. Uh, also in the standard plan, uh, you can set limits on uh, how much storage you want to use and, and how much pull traffic you want to use. And that allows you to uh, effectively manage costs. So let's cross over now to the IBM Cloud Console and uh, just take a little look at the uh, container registry in action. Okay, so here I am in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com and I'm in my dashboard. So if I want to create a new instance of the container registry, then I click catalog. And uh, again, as always, I can just type in here, uh, start typing in container. And you can see here container registry comes up. So click there and uh, then you get the, uh, the the create screen. So there's some information here about the container registry. So have a read of that. Also, if you want to have a look at the docs, the docs are really useful uh, to find out more about the features of container registry. Then obviously just click docs and you'll get to the uh, get to the documentation page. Now, what you'll find is that you can only ever create one instance of container registry within your account. Uh, but uh, to do so, just click the create button. I've already created a, uh, a, a container registry instance. So when I click create, I basically get taken straight to my to my registry and my registry will also show up, always show up under my uh, Kubernetes um, dashboard. So, so again, to, to access it, I, do, I can uh, use the hamburger and then just go down to Kubernetes. And uh, what I'll find is uh, the registry menu item here and uh, I can just click there and find my registry. <clears throat> so very quickly, uh, a, a very quick tour. So it gives you, a, uh, first of all, you can choose your location. So as I mentioned, it will always uh, give you uh, access to all of the regions within IBM Cloud from Dallas to Tokyo. Uh, and, uh, and then from the quick start page, it will give you some information on installing the IBM Cloud CLI 
and also installing Docker as well. So just to let you know, to actually start using this and actually upload images to the repository, you do need to use IBM Cloud plugin and, and also Docker commands uh, to do so. But we'll show you that in a, in, a, in a video in a moment. So once you're ready to go, you can then see that you've got namespaces. You can create different namespaces in the GUI. So a namespace is basically an area where you will then upload images. You can then create repositories within your namespace and obviously images within your uh, within your repositories. So if we quickly um, go down to, to London, I've actually already got a container in, uh, uploaded into uh, into London. So you can see here that I've got a namespace, so my namespace is example health, and you'll see again, see this in, in, the, in the next videos. Uh, within that namespace, I then have a repository. So I can click there and it will go to the repository tab. Then within my repository, I've actually got an image I've actually got two images. So then you can see the two different images that are in my repository. And I can do the same here as well. Um, and um, so I can then click there. And then you can actually see, so if I just quickly go back um, to the to the tab, you can also see that I've got a, some, some issues around security status. So again, I can click on the, the issue. And then this uh, takes me to my uh, the vulnerability advisor report. Uh, and then if I wanted to uh, to take a closer look at that, it will tell me what issues it's actually found within my uh, within my container, so that uh, I can then go and go and uh, address these or or ask the developer to uh, to sort these things out for me. So let's quickly head back to uh, to the top level again. Uh, so from here I can uh, I can say delete an image, so I can tick it there, and then click delete. So if I no longer want that image, so it's an older version or something. And then you can see that it will go to trash. So I'll actually um, stay in trash for a little while just in case I want to uh, restore it. So I can restore the image as well if I want to. So I shouldn't about have the two images back up there. And then there's some uh, some settings here as well. So you can basically see here, this is where I start to uh, set some quota. So here at the moment you can see that I'm actually storing 55 megabytes, but I can set a quota on here as well. So if I wanted to limit it to a certain amount, I can do. Uh, and similarly, you can see how much I've pulled already, so 49 megabytes. So again, if I wanted to limit that, then I can do so here as well. And then there's some other information here, which is uh, which is useful too. So that's it, a very quick guide around the registry. As I mentioned, uh, to, to be able to upload images to the registry and, and use them, uh, you do need to install the IBM Cloud CLI. But in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at actually building a Docker container pushing it up to the registry and then deploying that into a Kubernetes container. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so and you'll be notified when I add new videos in the future. But in the meantime, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.